welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today's project is a viewer request. So I recently did a video um, explaining the things that I have in my shop that I sew to sell. In there I mentioned that if there's anything you saw that you wanted me to do a video for, I'll do that. So here it is. Today's request is a tablet bag or an iPad bag. So these bags are made initially with upholstery fabric and I, this is an Apple iPad, probably the one of the very first ones that came out. I've had this for a long, long time. Anyway, it fits in the bag nicely, just in the front there. The bag also has a pocket in the middle, so you could fit another iPad in there if you wanted to. And there's also a zipper at the front where you could put another iPad. So you can have version one, two and three all in the one bag. And there's even room to put your uh, charges and a purse, things like that. So you can use these bags for a handbag. In fact, my mum actually has this colour as a handbag. And I've made these with just some short straps. If you want to, you can go and make these with much longer straps and have it like a crossbody bag. But the video that I'm showing you today to make these tablet bags or handbags is with the shorter handle. Stick around and I'll show you how to do these. At the end of the video, I'll have a bit of a chat with you about how I go about pricing my products to sell. Okay, so here are all the items that we're going to need to make this bag. What we've got up here is two pieces for the main body of the bag, and that is 13 inches by 11 inches, and I've stabled it, stabilized it with just some dressmakers interfacing. So this is a cotton one. You can use whatever you prefer. So two pieces at 13 by 11, and then I've got two lining pieces at the same size. And I'm just doing something a little different this time with my labels. I'm actually going to use my regular label on the inside uh, of the bag. And on the outside of the bag, I'm going to use something a little bit nicer, which is this one here. So that just says Christine made it, and that'll just uh, be clamped into the main body or the front of the bag. The back part of the front zip is 13 inches by 10, stabilized again, and then I've got a lining piece for that. And we have got a 13 by 8 inch piece this is the front pocket for the bag and that's stabilized and we've got a lining piece for that as well then we've got two strapping handles uh, these it's just a, a polypropylene webbing I think it's called one inch wide by 22 inches long so we need two of those we've got two zips um, my zips are a number five zip and it's about a meet, an inch and a quarter wide so I've got two zips that are 11 inches long, four zipper ends which are two and a half inches by one and a half inches and we've got a couple of zipper pulls. The other thing we need is just about an inch of velcro or hook and loop tape. Now before I put my tabs on I have to put my zipper pulls on. I have a terrible habit of forgetting to put these on and then I go and close up my zips. So to put the zipper pull on if you're using a continuous zip, just open it up slightly, have the curved end facing you and the, um, the little lever facing up as well. So curved end facing you. Just pop it on top until you stop and then put that on the other side. Fingers on either side, push and there we go makes it a little easier to in, insert your um, tabs if both ends of your zip are closed. So we'll go and do that for the other one. Just pop the zip in the middle and this will open up easily later on if you're not familiar with them already. To put the zipper tabs onto the end of the zip, we want to make sure the wrong side is facing. So it's a bit difficult with black. So assuming this is the wrong side of the fabric, we're just going to fold this in half. Can you see I've drawn on there? We'll fold this in half with the right sides facing. And we're just going to place that over the top of the zip. 
So what we're doing is we're enclosing the raw edge of the zip and we're going to have our printed side facing up. So there's our wrong side looped over the zip. And then we're just going to stitch straight down on the end there. Because this is going to be lined, we don't need to worry about folding in any raw edges. This is just so much quicker to uh, put your zipper tabs, zipper ends in. So with our tab folded over, we're just enclosing our zip and we'll stitch this down. Do the same for the next one. So I've got the wrong side of the fabric facing up. Fold it in half, stick it over the zip, and we'll do the same for the other side. So it might seem a little bit weird that you've actually gone and put the raw edges facing the inside, but what happens now is that you'll just fold this flap over like that. And then if this were our printed fabric, the printed side would be up. We still have raw edges on the side here and on the ends, but these will all be hidden in the lining later on. Okay, so it's a much quicker way of putting your tabs on and you don't have as much bulk when you're actually stitching the bag together. What we need to do now with our main bag body, which is the 13 by 11 inch piece of fabric, and it's got the stabilizer on it, we want um, one of our zippers and we're just going to place that over the top. Now I like my zips to open from the right to the left so most of us are right handed and as you move it to the right, did I say from the right to the left? It's from the left to the right. So we go from the left across to the right and the zip will open up that way. It's up to you which way you want to have your bags opening. So place your zipper with the um, pull facing down and we just want to clip that onto our fabric. Just centre that and we'll clip it down. And just with the tabs fold them out of the way so we want to fold those tabs toward the end. So with our lining piece we'll just place that down on top with the right sides facing. Line that up so that it measures or matches the corners. Make sure your tab is out of the way. And we'll clip that together. And I'm just going to move my zip all the way to the end just so that it's not in the way as I'm sewing later. And when you get to the other end, Make sure that your the tab, both of the pieces are folded toward the end. It's a bit bulky just here, but that's because the zipper pulls in the way. We'll move that out of the way as we're sewing. So what we're going to do now is take it to the machine, put our zipper foot on, and we're just going to stitch all the way to the end. Place all three layers, the zipper and the fabric, under your machine. Back stitch and sew all the way down. And when you get to the part where your zipper pull is, just slide that across, just so that the bulk is removed. And when you get to the end, back stitch. And we'll go and do the same for the other side. Take the other main body of the bag, and we're just going to lay that right sides facing directly over the top. And we're going to line up the edge of the fabric here and at the other side. Clip it together. And I've cut my zipper tab just a little bit wider. That's not a problem at all. I'm actually following the line of my zipper tape to stitch my uh, bag piece down. So that'll be trimmed off later. We don't even need to flip it across, flip it over and find your other lining piece. Make sure it's the right size too. I have a tendency to grab the wrong pieces and we'll line that up 
top and uh, left and right again and we'll match that up just at the top of the zip. And we'll take this to the machine and stitch that down. So we'll back stitch at the beginning and the end once again. And now we're ready to top stitch. Take our smaller piece of fabric, which is 13 inches times 8 inches, and we'll take our zipper tape and we want to make sure we do run this the same direction that we've done before. So we're opening it from the left to the right. Place it face down over the top of the bag or pocket and just line that up. And we'll take our lining piece and we'll place it face down on top. Match it up at the bottom there and on the sides and clip it down. And we'll stitch this all the way down. Now you don't need me to show you how to do that because I've shown you on the main body of the bag. So I'll just go and do that quickly. Taking our pocket piece which is 13 by 10 inches, we'll have that right side up and we'll place the one that we've just done right side down and line up the top edge of the zip with the top, the side edges of the bag. So there's quite a bit of a gap here, but that's because uh, the front piece is actually quite a bit smaller. So I just want to line those up and take your lining piece. So we want the 13 by 10 inch lining piece, which is the same size as this one here. Place that right side down, facing. We'll take that to the machine and stitch it down. Now that I've got my uh, front pocket put together and the top stitching has been done, I'm going to go and put my label on. But before I do, I'm going to show you how this is going to work. So we've got quite a large piece for the top part of the zip and a smaller piece just here. When we turn this over, bring the edges together, we're not going to stitch this down just yet, you can see that the pocket actually has the fabric folding over the top. So it just gives a nice little folded edge to the top of the bag and when we put our main body of the bag down We've got our zippered pocket at the front, then we've got another pocket, and then we have our main bag body here. And this is where my other label is going. So I'll just pop that one on. So to put this label on, I'm just finding the center. So that's my center point. Find out where I want to put the label. And I think that looks good just about there. And I'm just going to make a little mark just there. So I'm going to make a little slit into my bag. Now I only make, want to make the slit in the main body of the bag, not the lining piece. Just take my seam ripper, make a little hole, just being careful not to go too far. Open up the prongs. Stick the prongs through the bag like that and pop the bracket on the back and that's as easy as that. And we'll take the plastic covering off later on, that'll just protect the metal for a little while longer. Take your front pocket pieces and we're going to line that up, all the pieces together. And what we're going to do is just do a narrow stitch from here up and along the bottom 
and along the sides just to secure everything in place so that it doesn't shift when we actually attach this to the main part of the bag. So we'll take that to the machine and we'll stitch that down. I'm just going to do a quarter of an inch seam here. And come up along the side doing a quarter inch seam as well. We only want a quarter inch seam at the moment because we're just securing these pieces down. We'll do a wider seam when we put the whole bag together. And same on the other side. Okay, so this is ready to attach to the main body of the bag. Now with your main part of the bag, open it out and make sure the lining pieces are toward the top. And we want the zipper fully closed and the front pocket bag with the zipper fully closed and we're just going to place that over the top. What we need to do here is actually put the Velcro on. So we'll line this up along the bottom and the sides and we'll just clip that together. And what we're going to do here is determine where the Velcro is going. So I've got a piece of hook and loop tape or Velcro and just keep the two pieces together and you'll see I've actually got a tape on the inside. What I've done here, I've got a wash away quilters tape. So this is just basically a double sided tape. So you, because we're not going to be washing this bag, it won't hurt if you just use a double sided tape, but this is fantastic on garments. If you're putting a zip in and you don't want to use pins or you're not comfortable with the positioning, you can use this wash away tape. So you'll just cut it to size, it's double sided. Just place it over the top there and cut it and we'll peel off the backing. What this does is it makes it easier for me to actually put the hook and loop tape in the place that I want to have it. So I want to have it sitting just on the inside of the front body, the front pocket, and it's going to be sitting down, hidden away on the main body of the bag. So if I take off the tape or the um, paper, you can see the adhesive is there. Place that in the center. And just press that down so that is adhered to your front pocket and then what I'm going to do is take the adhesive off this side and place that down over the top so if I turn that around you'll see I've got the two pieces of Velcro exactly where I want them. So holding the bottom down, just pulling it apart. I'll have the positioning of my Velcro. So I'll take that to the machine and stitch that down around there and stitch this one down. Take these clips away for the time being. Now this one here, you will need to open the bag out and stitch the Velcro down. Let's go do that. So open out your bag. Make sure the main body, the, the front part of the pocket is out of the way. Stitch this down. At the corners I like to back stitch. Turn it around, make sure your pocket is out of the way underneath. And there we go, the pocket, the Velcro has been stitched down on the front pocket. We'll do the same thing for the main bag. We have our main bag piece, just make sure the lining is to the other side. With your bag handles, in this case I'm using a strapping, so I've got them cut to size which was the 22 inches, but I've got 
some edges which will fray so I just need to melt the edges on that my lighter actually ran out of gas so uh, what we'll do is just take some a flame and just singe the edges of your handle both sides you don't want to inhale the fumes of these either so it's best to do it outside if you're doing a lot now I do have a confession to make I have actually gone and put the whole bag together and then realized I've forgotten the handles so I've had to go and pull the whole thing apart after the velcro has been put in place we want to put our handles in place so this is the main body of the bag and we want to attach a handle here and a handle on the other side make sure your lining is out of the way to place your handle down we want to come down two inches from the top so if we just measure two inches from the top line there to this mark here that's two inches and from the edge we want to come three inches so we've got three inches from the edge and just bring your handle across so three inches from the outside edge and two inches from the top down and we can pin that in place and when we stitch this we only want to stitch the bottom one inch so we want to stitch down here across up and down again up to you if you want to do the little the cross hatch going across I just go back and forth here come up back and forth and then come down again that's enough stability for the handles from the other side just make sure you do exactly the same and you don't want to twist your handle so you want your handle to be nice and flat all the way around come three inches from the outside edge and place the handle two inches from the top and pin that in place and we'll do the same on the other side so take the back piece the other piece of your fabric and move the lining away and we'll come three inches from the edge and two inches from the top and repeat for the other side and then just double check your measurements okay we can take this to the machine and we'll just stitch one inch down and we'll leave that as an opening at the top there and remember to make sure your lining is out of the way when you're sewing now when you're sewing I keep telling you to move your lining out of the way um, I should listen to it myself sometimes because I've actually gone and stitched the handles and the two layers of lining together so I'll just undo that okay now that the handles are done I can actually go and put this bag together for real now with your handles facing up and the main top zipper of the bag open let's clip everything together now again we want to keep our lining just to the back at the moment so we're going to clip the pocket piece the front pocket piece onto the main body of your bag and we'll just clip all those layers together and then we'll take the main body of the bag leave the lining out of the way and we'll clip that together as well so the handles will just sit inside find the intersection where you've got the zipper tab and your lining and just the top edges there and you want to make sure this is lined up really well so we want the top of the blue sections of the bag to line up nicely and then we can ease the rest of it in same for the other side the zipper the tab of the zipper can go toward the lining and line up the blue edges there and ease the rest of it in 
and I just say ease it in meaning um, just hold it taut so that it's level at the top because the top is much more important than anything else you want the bottom to line up but you do want the top to line up so that you don't get any pleats and so that your bag looks nice and even at the top because that's what's going to be seen clip the edges of the lining as well and we're going to leave an opening of a few inches so just in between here we're going to leave this open we're not going to sew that we'll sew around the edges there and again you want to try not to have too many ripples in here so you just want to ease that in just here too but the most important part is the main body of the bag okay we can go and stitch this closed okay we're almost finished we are going to use a half inch seam allowance, back stitch here, stitch to the end. Now I like to back stitch at my corners and when you get to half an inch you can come around, back stitch here. I like to back stitch over the seams here. This is the reason why we don't put the zip all the way to the end because the zipper, you can see the, um, feel the lump here or see the lump here of the actual zipper. If we have the zip going all the way to the end, it adds so much more bulk. Uh, we have a tendency to go a little bit fast over our seams and we'll end up breaking a needle, maybe nicking our plates. So it's much better to actually put these little tabs on the end of your zipper just to remove some of that bulk. So there's my next zip here. It finishes there and you can see there's quite a dip that goes down and it just it's much better for my machine. And when we get to the end we'll just back stitch and we'll leave this opening just here. Any edges that are a little bit thick that you want to trim off, now's the time to do it. We've got a half inch seam allowance all the way around. If you want to keep that on your bag, that's fine. We're going to trim the corners. We don't need all that bulk when we turn the bag through. And if you want to, you can go and trim the edges down as well. And we can now turn this bag through. So find the opening here. Hopefully you've remembered to keep your zip open on the inside. You might need something to help poke those corners out. And all we need to do now is close up the bag here. I'll go and change my thread and we'll close up this opening just there. Now pricing these isn't as easy um, as the normal products that you might have. There's quite a lot of fabric in here. So I, I can keep my prices down on these because I don't pay for the fabric that I've used in any of these bags. And because the fabric costs me nothing, I can just virtually just charge labour. I can charge for the zips, the labels and the strapping. Uh, so if you're going to make these to sell, you've got to account for your fabric unless you can get it for free and you can pay it forward like I do. So my strapping I get from a local company in Melbourne. You can get this um, strapping anywhere in the world. So all you've got to do is look for... Uh, strapping that's used in dog collars and leads and the zipper tape I purchased the continuous zipper tape uh, I buy two three hundred meters at a time and I buy about three hundred zipper sliders at a time these labels these are a brushed metallic look label I got these from Alibaba so they were actually quite expensive I bought a couple of hundred 
um, and it cost me about $300, but most of it was freight. So if you're over in America, um, you will probably get these a lot cheaper because we actually paid um, US dollar rates for it. So it's really, really expensive. But the fabric labels that I usually use on my products, they're really cheap. So you can still put those on. I've Most of my bags, in fact, all of my tablet bags have got these labels on them. They don't have this brushed metal label. I haven't had this label for very long. Um, and I really only like to put them on the better things that I make. So time-wise, it takes me about an hour to do a bag. I can probably get maybe just over one bag made in an hour if I, if I knuckle down and do nothing else and if I have my production line happening. So it equates to about one and maybe one and a quarter bags an hour. I only charge $40 for these bags. I should actually charge a lot more, but I just can't get my head around somebody having to pay more than that for a bag. So I charge $40. My labour rate is $40. The materials that I've used in here uh, are only a few dollars. So, you know, even if I just had my labour rate at $30, it's still a really good labour rate um, and $10 in, in whatever materials and sundries. So, yeah. They should be, I, I really should be charging more and this is where it gets difficult as a, a dressmaker or sewer. Value, you've got to value your time but you've also got to value the product. Uh, and this is where we sell ourselves short sometimes. So I'm always going on about people valuing their product and in this particular instance I haven't valued either my time or the, the materials that have gone into this. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a conundrum. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is the bag that we've made today and that's got that little label on there that says Christine made it as opposed to my normal handmade in the Gamby labels. My handmade in the Gamby label for this particular bag I've stitched into the inside of the bag. So fully lined this one's repurposed fabric. Actually, all of these ones are because these are all done with uh, rescued upholstery fabrics. So really good solid fabric, a lot of weight in them and really, really sturdy. So let me know if you make these. Send me an email and show me some photos. I'd love to see what you do. Catch you next time.